What's up, all me Ewoks, Shippos, Droids, and Wookiees? It's Anna, also knows at Star Wars Girl. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over this article that just came out three hours ago, and it's titled, Star Wars Andor Will Span the Five Years Leading Up to Rogue One. And then it says right here, each year will take up three episodes in the first season. Interesting. So this article is kind of a breakdown of how the show is going to go. So let's take a look at it. With less than two months to go before the release of Star Wars and or the Disney Plus series creator, Tony Gilroy has now shared more about the first season or how the first season will play out in the lead up to the character's ultimate mission in Rogue One. Speaking to Empire Magazine, Gilroy explained that the story follows Diego Luna's Cassian and or five years before the events on Scarif, with each year being explored over three episodes. Now, uh, knowing Disney's Star Wars the way that I do and if you guys are new to my channel welcome maybe take a minute smash that subscribe button ring the bell for notifications make sure that that bell is set to all that we actually get notifications when I do videos and live streams now with that being said I have been covering Star Wars news here on my channel for a long time it seems like it seems like forever but I've been covering it since uh, around the time uh, a little bit after the last Jedi came out I've been doing videos and you know kind of archiving the way that Disney has been handling the Star Wars IP. Now, do I trust them to do this? Absolutely not. And all this tells me from this is that it's a very, very rushed production. It's going to be completely rushed. You want to do a year in like three, like a, f a few episodes. That's, that's going to be, um, a shit show, I'm calling this now. Let, let's continue, though. The scale of the show is so huge, he explained. Directors work in blocks of three episodes. So we did four blocks in season one of three episodes each. We looked and said, wow, it'd be really interesting if we came back and we used each block to represent a year. We'll move a year closer with each block from a narrative point of view. It's really exciting to be able to work on something where you do a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and then jump a year year oh my god this this just gets worse the more that they talk about this they should really not talk about this oh my god what are you doing guys he, he, here's the thing when you have a character who is already dead like mofo died uh he got little screen time he was an asshole for most of the movie then at the ending he had a change of heart and he fucking died so all you really have left is to like his origin story, like, I mean, did anyone want an origin story? I don't know. I, I personally didn't care. I don't really care for him. Uh, the character, that is. I thought he was kind of an ass. And I'm like, not a Han Solo, like, endearing kind of ass. Like, a dude that's trying to be Han Solo, but literally just an ass. So, I wasn't really entertained or moved by him in any way. I think it would be more interesting to, like... If you, if anything, to get a K two S O story, and if it's a story about him, I guess a couple years. Ah, what the hell was that? What kind of ad was that? <laughs> but how K two S O was an Imperial droid, and then they, you know, got it, and then you know deprogrammed it and made it for the rebellion. That could be interesting. That has the potential, and it's just a quick. Here's this friendship. And then it gives you more of that, like, background, this, and, you know, it hits you more in the feels when they die. I guarantee you that's not going to be the case because of everything that we've seen with this. They're like, we're bringing in Bail Organa. We're bringing in Mon Mothma. We're bringing in all these cameos. And it's like, oh, my God. All right. That's all they care about is cameos. They don't care about, like, pitching the show based on, like, their actual content and story. But uh, that's because you actually have to have content and story. Uh, Gilroy also spoke to Comic Book earlier about the motivation for bringing Andor back half a uh, decade, giving the character half a decade, five, five years, five years, giving the character space to develop and change. Develop and change in five years? So this dude was nice and then became an asshole and then in Rogue One he was an asshole and then became nice again. Is that going to be the arc that we give it? That's not really intriguing. Uh, we always thought it would be interesting to take somebody who was so accomplished in Rogue One who has so many skills, the creator said. He's obviously a leader and he's a seducer. And what? When did that happen in the movie? Did I miss that scene? What did he seduce? I mean, I know he's Hispanic and like that's a trait of, uh, you know, the Latin lover, but 
really? When was that? I don't remember that. <laughs> All right, whatever. Uh, and he's... <laughs> I can't get over that. Cassie and Andor, the seducer. Give me a fucking break. Uh, he's able <laughs> of changing his mind, and he's creative, and he's also soulful, and he's going to give himself for the galaxy. What am I reading? It just went from, yo, we're going to fast pace this. It's going to be five years and three fucking episodes. Buckle your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be one of them roller coasters. It's going to be like Tower of Terror at Disney. Well, I guess it's not Tower of Terror anymore. It's the, it's the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, but when it like shoots you up and then drops you a little bit, then drops you more, then shoots you back up, it's going to be one of those. And then they're like, oh no, it's about seduction and he's he's a seducer and he's soulful. What am I reading? Oh my God. <laughs> okay, if they said that this was a comedy, I'd be down because uh, that's what it's sounding like right now. <laughs> he's going to give himself for the galaxy. And it was like, well, if you're going to start five years earlier, what's the longest possible journey he can make? So we put him in a big hole when we start. So five years earlier, he's a very different man. So watching, you want to see people change. Why don't you, like, make that, like, over, like, his life? Like, I don't know. I, I tell, oh, oh, my God. Here's the thing. Again, your character is dead. Like, he's gone. He died. He died in the big explosion. So there's nothing you can do with him in the future. So literally the only thing you have is the fucking past. Now, when George Lucas went back in time and did a movie about the past or his whole, you know, whole, whole trilogy about the past. Now, um, I, I mean, you don't have to love the prequels. You can hate the prequels. But at least there was a story there and there was a plan. And a lot of people like the characters in the prequels. Uh, I don't think anyone really complains about Obi-Wan in the prequels. Uh, my, my only beef with Padme is I'm like, she shoved out two freaking babies and she lost the will to live in like a top of the fucking arts medical bay. But uh, yeah, she lost the will to live. Like, I, I get it. You're in love with Anakin. I, I get it, girl. But you just shoved out two babies out of your body now the fan theory about how like Emperor Palpatine was like sucking the life out of her to feed Anakin now that's one that I me personally I have to you know in my mind make canon because aside from that I'm like homegirl you shoved out two babies out of your body what more of a will to live is there than that like you really want me to believe Padme was a terrible mom no I liked Padme I thought she was a good character so uh, that that's what I have to you know make the excuse for in my head I believe that fan theory that that person got it right I believe it but so they, they could do, you know, the starting of the rebellion and how he was involved in helping out the rebellion since he was younger. Uh, how the Empire, you know, affected him and why he's against the Empire. And all of these other missions that he's gone on. And all of it is leading up to that final mission. And they could put, like, little Easter eggs in here and there. They've done this before when you know a character is going to die. And it's like a prequel in a way. But... Oh my god. He he's soulful and seductive. That that's what we got. Isn't this a kid's show? Don't when any time I criticize Disney, they scream at me. They're like, and it's a kid's show. Whee! And I'm like, okay, it's a kid's show show, but now you're talking about seduction. And I mean, they say, you know, he was seduced like to Anakin, he was seduced by the dark side of the force. Okay, that's that's not that kind of seduction. But the way that they're talking about him, seducer and soulful, like what is this show gonna be about? Is it just five years of him banging chicks before he meets Jin? Is that what's going on here? I don't know. This this is a strange article. Very very strange. I it I mean, right now, based on what I just read, I I have to say this sounds like a comedy. <laughs> Maybe I should just like do reviews of this show as a comedy. But anyways, guys, that was that. Uh, the link for this article is going to be down in the description of this video. Please let me know what you think about all this down in the comment section below. Uh, please let me know if you think I'm right. Please let me know also what like you think that they could possibly do with this character. Because uh, at, at this point, I mean, I didn't really care for this character, so I'm not really invested as much. But I mean, I I am completely open to them 
blowing this out of the water and being like, yo, you know that character that you didn't really care about that died in Rogue One? Well, now we're going to make you love him. And then when he dies in Rogue One, it's going to hit you in the fifis. So uh, I'm told I, I really hope that that happens. Actually, I really hope that they do a good job. But it's Disney. Uh I've seen their track record. It's not good. It's not good. But anyways, everyone, let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. If you like this video, go ahead and smash the like button. If you didn't, that's okay, too. Thank you so much for watching this far through. And until next time, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And may the force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone. Also, guys, I have a Twitch channel where I play video games like Elden Ring and KOTOR, as well as an Instagram where I post photos from my recent cosplay escapades. If you guys aren't following me on either of those, go do so now. The link is in the description of this video. And just in case if you guys are interested in my art, I have an art Instagram as well where I post all of the time-lapse videos from my recent project, the I project, as well as other projects that I've worked on if you scroll down further. And if you're interested in purchasing some prints of my art or stickers or bookmarks and stuff like that, any kind of merchandise that I make based on the stuff that I paint, you guys can go over to my Etsy. It's the Art of Anna TSWG. Everything, again, that I've showed you will be linked down below in the description of this video. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.